Everyone knows their modes, but no one knows how to use them. I remember when I first started getting excited about music when I was a teenager and learning the modes of the major scale and feeling pretty smug about myself that I knew what they were. However, if anyone were to ask me how to use that information, apply it to my playing, I don't think I would have had a good answer for them. I understood what the modes were theoretically, but practically, in my playing, I didn't know how to apply it. Is this just useless theory knowledge if you don't know how to apply it? It wasn't until years later that I began to understand how I could use some of that theory knowledge practically in my playing, and I'm going to try and do my best to explain how I like to think about it. You ready? Okay, so theoretically, a mode is just a scale, and by shifting where that scale starts, you, you create modes. For example, a major scale, let's take D major, the major scale from root note to root note, is also called the Ionian mode. If I play the scale starting on the second note of the scale, that is a Dorian mode. If I start on the third note of the scale, Phrygian, the fourth is Lydian, the fifth is Mixolydian, the sixth is Aeolian, and the seventh is Locrian. But you knew that already. This applies to any scales. So if, for example, we took the melodic minor scale and did the same thing, we'd also create modes of the melodic minor scale. Now, as a slight side note, it's probably more useful to learn the formulas for the modes rather than always reference them from the major scale. So for example, the Dorian mode always has a flat three and a flat seven. Phrygian has a flat two, a flat three, a flat six and a flat seven. If you're going to practice playing them, it's best to separate them from the major scale and play them all from the same root note. So, for example, D Ionian. And then we've got D Dorian. D Phrygian. D Lydian. D Mixolydian. D Aeolian and D-Locrian. Congratulations, you now understand modes theoretically. But how is that knowledge useful to you and how would you implement it into your playing? Understanding chord theory and how you build chords is such an important part of music theory and it's there's so many obvious practical ways that you can implement that in composing, in arranging, in improvisation. But with modes, yes, you can play the scales, but how would you use them in a performance setting? Or how do they help the choices you make in, in what you play? Okay, there may be a time where you play a mode scale within your playing, but I think that's more likely you identifying what you've done rather than your knowledge of modes enabling you to do something, if that makes sense. Okay, here's a couple of ways that I like to think about using modes practically. Have you ever come across someone describing a music as having a Phrygian sound or a Mixolydian sound? We in the Western world have become so ingrained with the major scale, the diatonic sound that we hear in music every day. We hear it so much that we don't recognise the qualities that that major scale or the Ionian mode has. You know, it's a bit like when you cook fish at home and you don't realise that you're making the whole house smell of fish because you're inside it and it's building up around you. And then you go out and when you come back in, you open the door and it's like, cool, the house stinks of fish. I'm not sure if that analogy works. Anyway, what I'm saying is the Ionian mode has a flavour, has characteristics um, that we so often don't identify because we're so used to hearing them. But all the modes have characteristics. So when we hear something that comes from another mode, it's really easily noticeable to us because we don't hear it as often. Now, I think the best way to demonstrate this is by using the scale over a pedal note or a drone. So if we're in the key of C. So my C here is giving you, this pedal is giving you that tonal center, that home point. So at the moment, your ears are waiting to hear what the harmonic context is. Your ears might be making the assumption that this is the major scale, or the Ionian mode. Especially if I add a couple of other notes that come from that. I think this is your Ionian mode. When I start to add some notes that are outside of the Ionian mode, you're 
really noticing that flavour. So this might, you might say this, has a Phrygian sound. Because this is the C Phrygian scale that I'm playing around. Now if I change some notes, I might give you... Now I'm playing a Mixolydian sound. Characterized by that plus seven. Against this backdrop, I think it's a really clear way of hearing the differences between some of the different modes. So in the same way that the Ionian mode, the, the major scale, is so central to Western music, there's other parts of the world, like Eastern Europe and Asia, where the pervasive mode in the music, in their traditional music, is different to the Ionian scale. A really fantastic example of this is a guy that I follow on Instagram. His page is called Music Riaz. And he, what he does is he sings melodies over a drone um, and he shows you how he sings them. Um, you've got to watch it, it's brilliant. It's a really stark example of the difference between those traditional scales and modes that that country's heritage is versus what we're used to in the Western world. Definitely go and check him out. So some practical applications of this can be used on songs that stay on one chord for a long time. So there's plenty of jazz, um, funk, and Latin songs that stay on like a minor seven chord for ages. Let's take C minor seven, for example. This chord appears in a number of different keys. It's the second chord in B flat major. It's the third chord in A flat major. It's the sixth chord in E flat major. It's the second chord in B flat melodic minor. So when I'm improvising over a minor seven chord, I've got some options over what scales I could be using. Dorian, Phrygian, Aeolian, Dorian flat two. So all this time on a C minor seven chord, I've got all these options of what type of C home base I'm drawing from. Okay, and this leads us nicely into the other way that I kind of like to think of implementing this theory. Um, and that's within the realm of, of jazz, playing jazz. Generally in Western music, most of the music that we're used to hearing in the charts is diatonic, which means it predominantly stays in one key. All the notes and the chords are referenced from a home key center. Now jazz doesn't always stay within one key center and has a number of chords and notes that will take us out of that key center maybe before bringing us back. And many jazz styles use modes as an improvisational device. When you're improvising over diatonic changes, so chords, chord progressions that all stay within one key, you can think of this horizontally. You can group all these chords that are coming up together and go, oh, these are all chords from the key of B flat, so I'm gonna play B flat ideas over these chords. So for example, the jazz standard Autumn Leaves, the first four chords are C minor seven, F seven, B major seven, E flat major seven. All of those four chords are from the key center of B flat major. So I can look at those chords together as one horizontally and group them together and improvise leading between the chords horizontally. In lots of jazz tunes though, we get substitutions, we get key changes, we get secondary dominant chords that all pull us out of that diatonic key center. And in those instances, it's often useful to think about things vertically rather than horizontally. So each chord will have its own modes and scales to draw from for improvising. Let's have a look at the first four bars of Someday My Prince Will Come, a jazz standard Someday My Prince Will Come. First chord is B flat major seven. Second chord is a D seven. Into an E flat major seven. Into a G seven. The first chord, B flat major seven, I would use the B flat major scale or the B Ionian mode to improvise over. And then the D7, a D7 isn't in the key of B flat major. So I could use D, a mixolydian for that. So I've gone from B into D7. And then next is the E flat major seven, which I can use the lydian scale for. 
and then G7, G Mixolydian. That's four choices that I've made for those four chords. But if I look at each chord individually, I have more than one choice for each chord. So for the B flat major seven, I might keep that as Ionian because this is the key center in the first chord of the song. So I'm gonna play Ionian. But for my D7, now I've got options here. I could play this as a D mixolydian, or I could play this as a diminished, or I could play it as a D altered, which is a D superlocrian. Um, so I've got options. I could play it as a um, I play whole tone scale, my E flat. Play that as a I played it as Lydian before, but I could play that as an Ionian. The G I've got on dominant chords we have lots of options. So like the D7, I've got the same sort of options for my G7. So I could play that as a diminished, as if it's like a G7 flat nine. Or I could play it as a mixed Lydian before, or I've got um, G altered. I've got the Lydian dominant even on the G. These are all notes that I can draw from for each scale because I'm thinking vertically. I'm thinking, what notes do I have above me? Rather than thinking about the note in relation to the, the chord before or the chord after, I'm thinking about what options do I have with that chord in isolation. So to try and simplify what I'm saying here, although I guess this isn't simple stuff, each type of chord will have a different mode option for you to draw from when you're improvising. A simple minor seven chord could give you three options, Dorian, Phrygian, Aeolian. And the same applies to more complex chords. So when you see a dominant seven, the sharp nine, and the sharp five, you've got the altered mode that you can draw from. Or over a minor seven flat five or a half diminished chord, you've got the Locrian mode to draw from, or the Locrian sharp two mode. So I think there may be another learning step required to practically apply this mode theory in this way. And that's in learning what modes are available to what chord types. When I say chord types, I mean like a dominant seven sharp 11, or a minor seven, or a minor seven flat five, or a major seven sharp 11. So say I just see a D seven, I know that I can draw from the D mixolydian scale. But if I see a D seven with a sharp 11, I know that I'm gonna draw from the Lydian dominant scale, the D Lydian dominant scale. So learning the different relationships between chord types and modes is really useful. Does that make things any clearer? It's quite common to think about improvisation like this in jazz music. The tricky thing can be when you first start doing this is making those, although you're thinking about each chord in isolation, trying to connect the lines in between so that your improvisation sounds like it flows nicely from chord to chord and doesn't sound like you're thinking about something there and then you think about something separately for the next chord. You want to try and make your lines connect to each other, even though you're playing different scales between them. So you might be using notes that are common within the chord before and after. I remember when I first started thinking like this, I found it really difficult to not feel like I was playing a scale over one chord and then a scale over the next chord and to, to build up lines. But that just comes with time. The more time you play, that will become automatic. I think thinking of things in terms of scales is often felt a bit strange to me because we so seldom ever play scales in our playing. We're always trying to f use information from the scales to, to create something melodic or interesting. I think that scale application isn't that straightforward. I hope some of that might have helped bring some context, some ways to implement the theory that you already knew into your playing. Thanks for being here.